The executive director of this organization brought me in in order to do a turnaround of the finance department in order to be able to establish financial leadership. I contracted with a financial consultant, brought in their CPA only when we needed the CPA to do their work in order to maintain the um, fiscal expertise. However, um, the turnaround took quite a bit of time, as you can imagine. The first six months was just dealing with the crisis and trying to help people to recognize we didn't need to stay in crisis mode all the time. But there really was a, a high level of crisis at the time of going in. So it took about six months to calm things down, quiet things down, and get things set, uh, setting the stage. About two months worth of pretty high mo uh, momentum that got started. And there was some excitement about what the possibilities were, and then an abrupt stop to the project. The federal government has a high focus on financial leadership, and they have a particular model in mind that was relevant to this case study, and that is a CPA in financial leadership. So they had always been kind of nervous about this model. The um, uh, first time an issue came up, there was communication that was an important communication that was a deadline was missed, and that became the opportunity for the federal office to say, not going to continue, we want you to go back to the old model. So they required the abrupt change, uh, and we stopped the project. Just before the stop of that project, February 28th, I gathered folks together, and we created, we drafted a plan for what was going to be the next steps in moving forward in 2011. That plan was drafted, but four days later, I was given the communication about the end of the project. So the plans were never actually finalized. So this gave us the opportunity in uh, this uh, case study to be able to look backwards and say what was accomplished so far up to the point of drafting those plans, look at the research strategies, what is available, and then be able to offer recommendations to the senior leadership to say, here's the next steps forward. The methodology is using action research. For those of you who are familiar with Kurt Lewin's action research cycle, this is his modified or simplified version. And this is iterative, so it will continue indefinitely. Um, and so for, let's see if I can figure out the laser for this. Um, this is the period of time of when actions were being taken in the OD project. And then this is with our research questions one and two, and then three to pull together the recommendations for what's going to happen next. So that's the linking, and you'll see that in the next slide, which is plan, act, observe. And you see those research questions now connected with those, those parts of the cycle. So what was found when we went back and looked and chronicled um, the first phase assessments were conducted very quickly, and as I said, there was a lot of crisis um, management that was taking place during that time. Figure out what are the urgent issues and deal with those urgent issues and then begin, begin to move folks forward, building relationships, a new identity, and then drafting that plan. Question two is about the literature recommendations, and so with those recommendations, this is not a comprehensive research. This is actually those things that are relevant to this case study. So, uh, and looking in the, the literature, four areas emerged out of that uh, literature research. And um, these four areas are stated in action statements. So the action statements, um, I will show you in the uh, going forward how these then are connected with um, uh, the, oops, I'll go back and tell you the literature recommendations came to these four areas. So the drafted plans then were sorted so that they were then um, uh, in the same categories so that comparison could then be done. As a result of doing the comparison of these, the results showed that rather than looking at technical, procedural, um, focus within the finance department. There were some very specific areas outside the department within the agency and in particular out, outward into the nonprofit world and the connections and the partnerships that we had with uh, public leadership. 
and so um, in those government offices. And so the recommendations that actually come forward out of this project show the focus that is necessary for senior leadership to look at those higher level issues rather than remain focused on the lower level. So there are eight recommendations that came forward for this organization. And um, the first important one is that the, this particular nonprofit really needs to develop an identity that is beyond the scope of fulfilling a government contract, a government um, uh, being an arm of the government. And the leadership processes need to be mindful of the external issues that are happening in order to be able to put that mission, put that purpose into perspective. And to be able to slow down instead of perpetuating unnecessary crisis mode. Certainly when there's crisis, we need to deal with it, but not stay in the pattern of it when it's not necessary. Developing a capacity, not only at the senior leadership, but to go to the managers and to the supervisors and be able to build their capacity for um, being able to handle today's wicked problems, the really complicated things that are not going to be quick, easy fixes, but to be able to um, understand how the issues that they're dealing with actually will um, be able to deal with the problems on a much larger scale. And there is a recommendation to modernize their structures to the 21st century. Uh, many of the processes and the methods being used are really outdated and are holding back the agency in many ways. And so uh, that's the first four. And the last four, using action research by training people within the organization to be able to equip them to understand how they in, can influence those problems that they bump into and how they also are able to do something about them and to work with others and be innovative and fix those problems themselves um, quickly. There's a need. Um, uh, there's a recommendation here in order to build a more solid environment and climate of trust and productive relationships. Uh, there was a residue left over of a really deep fear in this organization, and so it's necessary, um, I thought it's necessary to have a recommendation about really building that trust and productive relationships. Um, resiliency as well. The next uh, seventh recommendation is about establishing an innovative and adaptive approach. Rather than fixing the old, being reactive to the things that are happening, moving the approach forward and saying, how are we going to adapt, be innovative, and move forward? And um, that certainly goes right into the, the final recommendation, which is making a solid commitment, really building and maintaining a solid commitment to unwavering um, a, that unwavering commitment to creating real impact rather than just perpetuating the same old services, the same old methods of using things. And so, lessons learned. Um, the nonprofit um, organizations are really important to be able to continue to have our vital partnerships between our public leaders in all different organizations and to be able to partner together effectively for the publicly funded services and to be able to do that in a way that we provide collaborative approaches, sustainable, innovative um, activities that really provide impact and create legacy. Why is it important that we do this? It's important because the future is really in our hands and we hold that responsibility. So that's the end of the presentation and I welcome to any questions that you might have.